Hi everyone, we are super excited to be doing our first Q&A with the Tally Dunn Gallery team. I am so excited to share with you uh, kind of what we go through on a daily basis. Even though we have a shelter in place in Dallas, uh, the five of us talk throughout the day and we Zoom regularly. regularly and uh, we're excited to have all these questions from you. So we're gonna start by introducing ourselves and I'll go first. I am Tally Dunn and I am the founder and owner of Tally Dunn Gallery. I'm excited to say that I am celebrating my 20th year with the gallery on Tracy Street in Dallas, Texas this year. Meredith? And my name is Meredith Leyendecker. I am the director of Tally Dunn Gallery, and this year marks my 10th year of working for Tally and working at the gallery. My name's Trini, and I've been with the gallery for eight years. I'm Ari, and I just started last summer, and I'm the social media and events coordinator. And I'm Kim. I started this around the same time as Ari, and I am the PR coordinator. So shall we hop into our first question? We have, this is a two part question. The first part being, how did each of you come to your position at the gallery? In other words, what's the backstory of your professional life in an art gallery? Okay, I'll go first. We'll do the same order if that's okay. Uh, um, I uh, majored in art history at Smith College. And interestingly, when I graduated, there was a financial market crash, uh, not, un not unlike the one we're going through now. And uh, rather than staying in the Northeast, which is where I wanted to stay after graduating, I came back to Dallas, which is my home, uh, because the economy was stronger here in Texas and there were more job opportunities. And I was thinking of going not into working for an gallery, uh, but with my art history background, I got the opportunity in the early 90s, right out of college to work for a gallery. And uh, that just was the path that I was set on. And I went from working at one gallery for nine years to opening my own gallery uh, in 1999. And that evolved into Tally Dunn Gallery and what's 2020. And so that's my path. Well, my tap path is um, a little bit similar, but sort of different. Um, I also majored in art history at Claremont McKenna in Southern California. And when I was graduating from college, um, Tally very graciously offered me a job as an assistant. So I packed up my car and I drove back from California to Dallas and started working at the gallery and just kind of over the years as the galleries evolved I um, have worked in different roles and now find myself 10 years later as the director which is really exciting. <laughs> my uh, I was a small business owner and uh, just wanted to change and so um, just had thought about a switch in direction, thought about getting into the art world. And uh, anyway, just kind of made some introductions and kind of made a phone call one day and met Tally and it was awesome because here I am eight years later. I, um, prior to working at the gallery, was at the Dallas Museum of Art. Um, so I think I was looking to transition transition into something a little bit more um, hands on and just get a different sort of experience. So I was looking for jobs on glass tire <laughs> and I saw a Tally Dunn Gallery and I got super excited and applied and then I met with uh, Meredith and yeah, it was, it was great. So my background is more um, in studio. Uh, I went to UNT and graduated um in 2016 and um so i studied printmaking and painting and then got my degree in interdisciplinary art and design so this was a really great fit for me to see another side of the art world and how galleries work um, as an artist so yeah and i'm coming um 
to this position from, I guess, more of an art history and museum background. So I graduated from Dartmouth in 2018 with um, an art history degree. And from there, I worked at the school museum there, the Hood Museum, in the contemporary, um, the global contemporary department. And then I moved into the contemporary department at the Dallas Museum of Art, where I met the where I met Chloe, who had previously held this position, um, but had worked at the DMA. And then she was the one who told me to apply once my internship at the Dallas Museum um, came up. And I the rest is history. <laughs> hey. We have an amazing team. I love the team. Okay. <laughs> next question. Okay, next question. Assuming you are all art enthusiasts or artists yourselves before getting involved in the business side of things, how did that change your views on art, if at all? I'm gonna, you know what? I've looked at this question and I'm gonna defer to Ari because Trini, Meredith, and I have been doing it for a long time. And I'm I'm more curious to hear kind of what you thought a gallery might be with the knowledge you have and what you've experienced. I think this is a great question for the two of you. Kim, do you want to take it? Hmm, I'm, I'm still thinking it over, but I guess one of the biggest things that I came to realize was just how much of the art world, um, how much of that does involve much more than just the artist, you know, making their work and what what actually goes into structuring, you know, successful artists and, and what is shown in museums. And I think I think it's been um, really eye opening to work at a gallery that I feel really cares about our artists and um, puts them very much at the forefront of what we do. And I think that that's something, I think maybe I, I was a little cynical before working in sort of the art market side of things. Um, and, and, I, and coming here, I see how much the gallery really is like the first person, the person who's on you know, the forefront of making sure that th these artists are getting the support that they need and being able to get their work, um, you know, in front of people for audiences to engage with. I think that it's really helped color um, more, more of what actually goes in the nitty gritty of, of you know, moving art into places and, and getting people engaged, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I feel like that's kind of the biggest thing I've taken away too, especially like as an artist, like seeing the position a gallery should play in your, in your art making and like in your development. I think I've seen, um, I, I've noticed that, like you said, Kim, like, this team and Tally like are so invested in these artists and like in such a beautiful way and like not just their work but also them as people and I think just that warmth is like something I'm going to carry with me going forward in my own career so I think for me that's the biggest thing I've learned is like how like you said kind of like how the galleries uh, function with like museums and other places where art is placed and in um, given to the public. So I think that's like the biggest thing for me. I don't think it's really changed my view of the art world though, necessarily, or art itself, but yeah. Meredith, Trini, any? Yeah, I can, relate, I, can re I can relate to Kim. I mean, it's awesome knowing, you know, the people behind who make some of the works that we're able to, you know, you know, deal with it's really awesome and have shows and uh, exhibits and to be a part of all of that that's been really uh it's a really uh, special kind of a special thing to really get to know them as people and um 
and to, to have discussions and kind of learn about where they're at. And, and it's, there's, I just love being around the creativity, you know, it's really amazing. I totally agree. And I think too, one thing for me that I've really noticed um, over the years working for Tally is that I've, it's, it's really helped me, you know, art is so subjective, but it's helped me kind of hone my eye towards specific things that I really love and, you know, what's good art, what's bad art. I mean, not that we're talking about bad art, but I just love the entire roster at the gallery and Tally's really put together such an amazing um, group of artists that not only reflect incredible work and technique, but also I think it really shows her personal aesthetic, which I relate to very, very much. That's awesome. I think I'll just, you know, reinforce what they're saying is so much of the game is relationship based. And I think when people look from the outside in to a gallery, they see, you know, perhaps just the, the, the transaction side, oh, the gallery's selling this or placed this, or it's so rarely do people all, well, I think there are people that realize it and collectors realize it and other artists realize it, but everything that happens with an idea and an idea that the artist has. And one of the first conversations an artist has outside of the intimacy of their studio is with the gallery. And before you ever see it in a museum, before you ever see it in an exhibition, those are conversations and a dialogue that place between us, whether it's Meredith in logistics, whether it's Kim writing a press release or Ari doing social media or an artist just having an idea. And we start kind of storming about where where that could go. And it is so much based on personalities and 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 artists that have worked with me for decades know that I'll talk to them about short range plan, long range plans, you know, where are you now and where do you want to go? And how can we get there? And it's it's a lot of dreaming, um, but we that's kind of what we, how the conversations start. But anyway, it's, it's great to hear what y'all have to say. So it's fascinating. Anyway, next question. <laughs> the next one is for you specifically, Trini. What are some unusual installation challenges that people may not be aware of? Good question. Uh, well, I think every situation presents an unusual situation you know, but at the same time, because they're all unique, maybe not unusual, but unique. Um, but then there are those that are just memorable, so to say. There's some memorable moments about it, making choices and key decisions. And I've had the opportunity, which has been awesome. Um, and that's a great experience. I'll, I'll maybe share a little bit about that, but was able to uh, place the UT Southwestern purchased a Joel Shapiro Joel Shapiro sculpture and we worked alongside with Joel and I was able to you know basically make a great recommendation of where well where within this area that had been identified where it should go but you know it's like it, it was just a really great opportunity to kind of really share what I really thought works and it worked out so it's pretty cool. And just to give a sense of scale, so it was a 22 foot tall sculpture. Right. It was commissioned and given to UT Southwestern. And we were, I was there, we were in Joel's studio uh, outside, outside of Manhattan. And we were, we were down to the, the most minute detail of the placement was going to be for setting the foundation for the 22 foot tall sculpture, Joel turned to Trini and said, what do you, where would you put it? <laughs> what do you think? So you have one, yeah, you have, a, you know, you have an opportunity like that. You better swing really well, you know, make a good choice of it. So it, it turned out great. Permanent. Like, yeah, permanent for a long time. <laughs> so that was fun. It was fun. That's awesome. 
Um, okay, next question. Could you name one or two artists that you like that worked before 1800? Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> it's just a repetition, probably. Well, I know. But anyway, so I'll go first. I, I'm going to go way back in time. I, first of all, almost everything. So being an art history buff. Um, but Giotto is going to be up you there. Home, Tally. <laughs> I know this is going to happen. So Giotto, <laughs> Velasquez, and Zuberon. So... Uh, those are, those are that, that jump at me. There's so much, honestly, though, I could, I know it's one or two, I could go back to pre-Columbian art. I could, there's so many different things that I could point out. And what's frustrating is, sorry, is that there are not a lot of women you can point to that are before 1800 because they were anonymous and we didn't study them and add but it was a different world before 1800. So um, Giotto, Velasquez, and Zuberon would be in my top, my top picks pre-1800. Meredith? Um, so I, my favorite artist probably of all time is J.M.W. Turner. And this might be cheating a little bit because he was born kind of later in the 1700s, but I'm still gonna count him because he is, one of my favorite artists, I, whenever I'm in London, hopefully at some point I'll be able to go back soon, going to the National Gallery and seeing his paintings there. I just, I appreciate his work so much because him starting out as more of just like a traditional Royal Academy of Arts landscape painter and seascape painter versus him kind of over his career just becoming more and more abstract. I think that's what made me fall in love with um, modern art and abstract art when I was in high school studying art history. So I wish I could name a woman too, but he's definitely at the top of my list. Trini? Hey, I Velasquez for sure. Velasquez and uh, El Greco. Those are great. I like a lot I was of that. another artist. El Greco was someone else that I was thinking of too. <laughs> well, Kim. Or Kim, who were yours? Well, I had to brainstorm new names um but I guess I feel like this is sort of cliche but I do really like Botticelli and so I'll name him and then I'll, I'll also name Quintormo yeah um I really I don't know I'm not like a big mannerist I mean I, that's a lie I sort of I really do like mannerism actually I think I don't like it but I actually really do um and I think I think I just go if I think pre-1800 it's I immediately am sort of thinking Italian for some reason, but I do um, feel like there's a lot of art history that I want to know more of, um, especially like non-European. So I, that is going to be something that I challenge myself to do. Um, I guess I'm going to grad school. So when I go to grad <laughs> school for art history, I'm definitely going to try to take more classes and, um, different art histories. Can I agree about wanting to learn more about art history because I think for me I always am so focused on contemporary artists mm -hmm. um, just because of like for one what I studied in school but also my interest but I think mine my pick is also going to be kind of cheating because he was born in late 1700s but I would say Goya um, so I took an art, I took a history of prints class in college and it was really cool. And we went to SMU and we got to see like prints, um, like etchings and stuff. And it was, it was really cool. Cause I, that's my favorite form of printmaking is etching. Um, so seeing those prints was awesome. That's my pick. Those are all good answers. Yeah, I really like answers. hearing yours. It says a lot about, I think it says something about all of y'all when we're all working in contemporary art to hear about something that's so outside of that it's really fun but our I think, next question, I think it's interesting uh -huh. that that three of the five have been influenced by work at the Meta Museum um, which is here in Dallas and the I think it's the largest collection of Spanish art outside of Spain and I grew up with that. Trini's handled a lot of the work there. 
and and Kim and college experienced it. And I think my interest of in Spanish Baroque art, which I studied in college from the scholars that were at to the Kimball Museum. I think, you know, what's in your own backyard definitely influences you um, and makes a strong impression the more you work with art. So anyway, I just, it's not something I would have thought of not immediately, but it was re it's really me that we're all three, or three of us are pointing to works that, that influenced us from the Meadows Museum here. And I guess on this note of, um, things that are outside of what we usually do at the gallery at least. Um, the next question is, what are your major interests besides visual arts? Do I, do I start again? Okay, uh, <laughs> girls' education. <laughs> it's an easy one for me. So very, I'm a product of girls' education. I went to Smith College, which I've mentioned. I've shown an enormous number of women artists over the past 25 plus years. And um, my passion most definitely, if I, if I have to take art off the list, it would be the education. That's a I would great a hobby, but that would be my hobby. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good answer. Working yeah. and it's education and there you go. <laughs> Yeah, well, I feel like my answer is going to sound a lot lamer than that, but um, I would definitely say I'm a big sports fan, and I have been my entire life with my dad and my brother, and, you know, basketball, golf, I play tennis in high school and college, so I definitely say I'm an avid follower of sports, and it has been difficult to not watch any current sports as of yet, but I'm excited for the day that they get to start playing again. Awesome. I'd say for me, music. I love music. Love listening to it, making music, playing music, drums in particular. So that's where I'm kind of, that's my second passion, I guess. <laughs> I'm still trying to think. There's so many things. Um, I love learning about plants and different types of plants and how we use them, but also like house plants. So I'm trying to become a really good uh, plant mom this year. <laughs> um, and I also love to read. I love to read, main, I like nonfiction a little bit more than fiction, but um, I'm really trying to like delve into a lot of great uh, black women artists and thinkers. So reading, going down the list of the greats basically. Yeah, I guess um, I echo a lot of, I like music and I like plants and all of that too. Um, and in college, I really spent all of my time outside of doing my, you know, coursework for my art history major, I would do a lot of organizing. So I was involved with um, a lot of student organizing for establishing Asian American studies on campus, which we didn't have. Um, and so I'm still really invested in social issues. And I think that's really important to the work that I see myself wanting to do in the art world. Um, so they're related, but I guess outside of art and outside of that bubble entirely, I recently adopted a puppy. And so <laughs> my life has definitely been, <laughs> um, consumed by him and his name is Pickle and um, we're currently working on rollover, so. <laughs> awesome. We love Pickle. That's awesome. All right, next one. What do you envision for the future of, te of the Texas art scene when this pandemic is over and we return to something like normal? Specifically, are there lessons we should learn from this experience? So I think, uh, I'm gonna go with the second question first. Are there lessons we should learn? And I think it's, yes, there's so many lessons to be, to be learned. And yes, there are lots of different perspectives I could have of whether it's as a business owner or advising artists or what it might be. But we are, we, having done this for 
since almost more than 25 years now. It's a, it's an un, it's an unpredictable environment having a gallery and you have to be very nimble and you have to always be prepared that something something can happen whether it's a terrorist attack or a stock market crash or specific economy changes those elements can have a direct impact on a gallery galleries get hit very quickly. so i think while this is on the current situation is on a level we've never really seen before I think the lesson to be learned is that, um, you know, to be nimble, to be not necessarily to be prepared, but to, because sometimes you can't prepare exactly like this, because I think it evolves from day to day, but to be aware that we are working in an environment that is volatile by its very definition and its very nature of what it is and it can be impacted by, dramatically, drastically impacted by the economy and changes in the environment. So I think that's a lesson to be aware of, is just the awareness that, the awareness that we were in a bubble, that it was going to get corrected. We didn't know it was gonna get corrected quite this way, but it's to build a solid business foundation so you weather the storm through ups and downs because if you're in it for the long haul there will be ups and downs i've been through probably more downs than ups if you look at the actual economy because i worked in the 90s in the art world and most of the 90s was a, was a struggle for people in the art world and then it's had volatility since then but so that's one thing as far as texas and looking forward i think there are just a whole lot of positives i think that i think the art community is going to be strong through this i think there's a new sense of connection i think it is an environment where we have so much to be proud of and so many things that are in our own backyard uh, we have incredible institutions here in Texas, actually all over the state. We're really lucky in Dallas and Fort Worth to have the extraordinary museums um, that we have. But honestly, there are fantastic museums all over Texas, from El Paso to Beaumont to Austin, San Antonio. And I think this is an opportunity for us all to be really grateful for what we have here. And also to know that I think we've all been taught through this that those things that we care about, whether it's an institution or a gallery or a nonprofit or a museum or a restaurant, that if we want those things to exist and succeed, our support is so important. And so I think it's been a chance for us all to kind of reassess what in our own community do we really care about and what do we want to try to help succeed and we want to meet that that whatever that entity might be on the other side of all of this and i i think it's i think in the end we'll all be more connected and stronger for it so that that's my opinion um we're not going anywhere <laughs> i've been through many storms and um i'm you know I'm, I'm excited about the future, to be honest. I mean, I really, really am. I think this is a challenging environment, but I also think that there are fundamentals uh, of art making and collecting and the, the impact it has on community that fundamentally are not going to change. Uh, so anyway, I'll turn it over to anyone else that wants to answer. Well, and I think just kind of echoing what you said, Tally, one thing that I learned from the get-go from you that I continue to just be amazed by and respect is your personal relationships, not only with the artists and museum curators and people in our world, but also collectors. And, you know, I think that really withstands the test of time. And while things may change in the economy and what have you, I think those relationships are what kind of withstand everything. And that's something that you've done that's really admirable and amazing. And that's why you're super strong and I think it's awesome. Thank you.
Yeah, ditto. I think a, a good, a, a good, strong sense of community the development of that. I hope that comes out more, you know, that would be awesome because, you know, the, the art world is kind of small. If, if you kind of think about it, especially here in Texas, I think some way or another, we all know each other. So it's kind of interesting, but um, that's what I would say. And I guess our, the next few questions are related. Um, so I'll read them all now. Should we even expect to go back to business as usual or should we seek opportunities to change how we work within slash relate to the art market? And um, related to that, do we as an artist need to rethink the traditional artist slash gallery relationship? I feel like those are very loaded, so. <laughs> Um, I think with the first question, uh, is it going to go back to normal? I, I think it just depends on with the gallery and you all chime in. I mean, cause you all, we, every person here represents a, an aspect of the gallery and how it runs and how it might be different now than it was six months ago, or maybe how it was, how it might be the same. But I think in general, um, I think there are certain aspects that will remain the fundamentals of artists making work and people wanting to see it and some people wanting to collect it. Those are, they've been around for hundreds of years. You know, they've been through economic ups and downs. They've been, they've existed without the internet. They've existed, you know, with their community based, things and I think that the fundamentals of what we do will stay the same. I think how we deliver that may change slightly and we have a, you know, we're in the midst of a crisis, a health crisis where we need to social distance. So the aspect of our business that involves social gatherings has to change. But it doesn't necessarily mean, it, the, the wonderful thing is we don't have a supply chain issue in this crisis. You know, what, what we handle and what we show and what we work with is art that's made by artists that will continue to be made and supported. We, it's up to us. The great thing is about, by definition, we're supposed to be nimble. We're supposed to be innovative. We're supposed to be forward thinking and have our finger on the pulse of what's going on right now. So if we're doing our job, we're going to respond to the current situation in a fresh, dynamic, innovative way, which is honestly what we should have been doing six months ago or a year ago. And what I hope we will be doing in six months and in a year and two year and three years so i think we're changing with the times and at this moment the times are only changing if that answers that question you all can chime in too yeah you know i think the the question about artists need, needing to rethink traditional artist gallery relationships i think that's so specific to the artist, every artist is different, every gallery is different, but I also think what we're talking about with support and community, you know, I see our gallery as like a little bubble of community that kind of extends outward, but you know, with us and our artists, that's such an important relationship. And I think it just completely depends on who you are, what kind of work you're making and what you need to support yourself and make your work. So I, I don't think the artist gallery relationship is going to change too much. But again, it's very specific to the to the person. Yeah, I sort of think about what the role that art plays for different people. And I think that, um, you know, for some people, their art making isn't necessarily tied to how they're able to provide for themselves. And and for others, that's different situations. So I think it, I think that um, having different spaces for people to engage with art or their art practice, I, I, I'm always for all of that. And I think that that's really important to foster lots of different environments for people to be with art and to think about art. Um, but I, I feel like in terms of 
the situation that we're in now, I don't know. I mean, I feel like only time can really tell how people will respond and how they, you know, structure their, their work and communities. But I, I do feel like for us specifically, I think this is really encouraging us to be a lot more, um, I guess, communicative with, with our artists. I feel like we're really reaching out to them and engaging with them in ways that, you know, we were just never pressed to do because we thought that, or it, it was enough to see people in person and get to hear from them. But now when we can't do that, I think we're being really creative with how we are checking in and, and staying in touch. And I think that's really exciting. Ari, what do you think? Um, I, I've been thinking a lot about how we engage with art, how we did before and versus like how we do now. And at least for me, I see a lot of people who may not have been interested in art or may not know a lot about it, trying to engage with it now in this specific situation since it, for a lot of people, it can be a form of release and like therapy. So I think that's really interesting. And I feel like going forward, we'll see people like hungry to engage with art in person because I mean, already, even before this, um, there's a lot of like different ways to engage with art online. Um, people have their own online shows like on Instagram or people will create a digital painting or something like that. But I, I kind of feel like going forward, people will really want to engage in person and be able to like be there with the work. And I think that'll be uh, kind of nice to see because I feel like um, it might get people involved that were not involved before. Um, but also going back to what Kim said, I was thinking about that too, is that I think for us specifically, we are learning how to share our work with people other than just in the traditional way. And we're learning how to engage with people who may not be able to get to our gallery or who may not even know that we exist. And now there's this way online that they can find us and engage with our artists and learn more about them. So I think in a lot of ways, it's just um, an opportunity for growth um, as like a person who makes art and a person who engages with it as a person who runs a business an art business. Um, so yeah, I, I think overall it'll be like what we'll see from it is a positive um, reaction to what's going on. At least I, I'm not sure so much about like the collector side, but at least on like the side of producing work and consuming it, I think it'll, it'll overall be really positive. I think uh, some of the, fun, I mean, I think the fundamentals were, a lot of the fundamentals will remain the same as far as like collector gallerist relationships and things like that. But it's interesting with the cyber world, like how the thread is really, it's amazing to see how much we can do, you know, on this end of it with, you know, Zoom and so forth. I'm curious to see what artists really take off with it or might really incorporate it in a workflow, you know? And for us too, I mean, we're doing it ourselves. So, and it's interesting and with all the different platforms, you know, social media inside, but I mean, as well and, and then, but us as an entity also with, you know, our, I would imagine that we might uh, engage more through our website, you know, these times that's would you know something that I would think about too but it's really great to hear everybody's you know different you know answers and and and, and thoughts and everything as we've all been you know during this time but yeah it's a good question real good question I think for all of our questions oh what were you saying Ari well no I just it kind of what Trini was saying about engaging more on our website it just made me think of like we said before, we're really thinking of new ways to share our artwork and our artists. And so um, just thinking about 
ways we can get the work out there, like the video of Trini installing the work was really interesting. And um, some more things that we have coming up in place. And I think it'll be really cool to like share the work in, in different ways. So that's all. <laughs> Any closing thoughts? Well, I hope everyone's enjoyed this. I've loved it. I yeah. mean, like I said, the idea was that we would share kind of what we've been doing. And I have to say in this time, we have so many questions. I mean, we're doing this Q and A now, but I feel like almost every Zoom we have and so many of the, the conference calls, we just start every day with questions because it's such an unknown environment that we're finding ourselves in right now. We don't, we don't even really know what two weeks from now looks like or three or four weeks from now looks like. And we start with questions and it's just been fun to kind of share with you how we engage with each other and what an amazing group of people this is. I feel so lucky. So through a pandemic shelter in place, these are the four individuals that I would to be with. And it's really fun to, to um, brainstorm and think about how the gallery can be strong we can build audiences that we don't have and how we can sustain and engage the audiences that we previously had and most importantly how we can connect with and support our artists who we so sincerely believe in and are excited to be working with and showing their work now virtually and in the future most most definitely in person so thank you for joining us and thank you all for participating. And thank you for the question. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye, Bye everyone.